I'd like to just go through a couple of examples that I've already worked um, really quickly. So here is CH3OH. It was an example formula that we worked with earlier. So if we calculate our valence electrons as I showed earlier, we would get 14 valence electrons. Also, as I showed earlier, N for this formula is two because we have one carbon and one oxygen and the rest are hydrogen. So that's a total of two non-hydrogen atoms. So six times two plus two is 14. Then when we compare these two numbers, so I've compared them here, our difference is zero. That means we have zero unsaturations, which means we don't have any multiple bonds, we don't have an incomplete octet, we don't have a ring. Okay, so let's look at this. What I did first then was I did my partial skeleton in black here. And since all I had for non-hydrogen atoms was oxygen and carbon, my partial skeleton would be oxygen connected to carbon. I had no multiple bonds, so I didn't need to add any other lines. So what I could do then is add the hydrogens. Now, when I added the hydrogens, I used two things to guide me. The first was the way the formula was written. So CH3 implies that this carbon would have three hydrogen atoms attached to it. And OH implies that this oxygen would have one hydrogen. So I put three of the four hydrogens here, I put one there. But the other thing to notice is that by putting the three hydrogens on carbon, I would give carbon four bonds, which is its desired number of bonds. And similarly, by putting one of the hydrogens on oxygen, the oxygen would have two bonds, which is a desired number of bonds. Then I did remaining electrons. So in this structure, before I put in these dots, we had one, two, three, four, five bonds. Each bond has two electrons, so five times two is 10 electrons. We started with 14 valence electrons, so 14 minus 10 electrons used for bonds would give us four remaining electrons. So I return to the structure and I put two on the oxygen here and two on the oxygen there. And at that point, the oxygen had a complete octet and I was out of it remaining electrons. So this should be my Lewis structure. The next Lewis structure I'm going to work is carbon dioxide, CO2. So first of all, let's count our valence electrons. So we have one carbon, which would give us one times four. We have two oxygens, which would give us two times six. So four plus 12, 16 valence electrons. Again, we already calculated 6n plus 2 earlier, but just to review, we have one carbon and two oxygens. That's a total of three non-hydrogen atoms. 6 times 3 plus 2 is 20. If we compare these two numbers, we can see that we have a delta of 4. For every 2 in the delta, we have one unsaturation. So therefore, we have two unsaturations. Now, the next step would be to draw our sigma skeleton. If we look, there are two possible skeletons here. One would look like this, oxygen, then oxygen, then carbon. The other one would look like this, oxygen, then carbon, then oxygen. We're gonna cross this top skeleton out because in this skeleton, we have an oxygen to oxygen bond. That is generally less desired, and we would not expect to see a molecule with this skeletal structure. So therefore, we're gonna work off of this one. Again, the black is our partial. Now, the next step would be to add our unsaturations. So we have a couple ways we could do this. Unsaturations are these extra lines, which I've drawn in blue. We have two extra lines. We could put one extra line here on the left bond and one extra line here on the right bond. We could also put two extra lines here on the left and leave only one line on the right. The reason that I chose to do this one is that by putting two lines here 
I get two bonds to that oxygen, which is its desired number of bonds. And then I can put two lines here and also give that oxygen its desired number of bonds. Whereas if I put three lines here, this oxygen would have three bonds, which would be more than its desired number. And that oxygen would have only one bond, which would be less. We're gonna see that that actually is, to some extent, a valid structure, but it represents uh, a, a resonance structure and uh, a different way of sharing electrons. At any rate, starting going from this structure then, we would do our remaining electrons. So ignoring those dots, we have two, four, six, eight electrons in our structure already. So that's this. We subtract it from our total number of valence electrons. That gives us eight remaining electrons. So we start on one of the oxygens because it's most electronegative. We put one, two, three, four, now that one is full, so we move to this one, five, six, seven, eight, and that should be our complete structure. Finally then, I just really quickly want, or I want to show you Lewis structure of ionic compounds. So with, when we suspect that there's an ionic bond in the molecule, what we do is we break the formula into two separate ions, and we do individual Lewis structures for each ion. If we don't do this, then 6n plus 2 is not going to work. And in fact, we also run the risk of drawing a covalent bond between two atoms that would most likely have an ionic bond. So how do we recognize an ionic bond? Well, one way to recognize it is to see metals from the left-hand side of the periodic table and non-metals like oxygen, etc., from the right-hand side of the periodic table together in the formula. That probably indicates that we have an ion. So what we're going to do then is separate the metals out as ions and all of the non-metal atoms as one piece. And that piece will be an ion with an overall charge. So for example, we would have a sodium plus ion to keep our charge balanced. This OC2H5 would have to have a negative charge. Okay, so now we're going to do the Lewis structure of the negative ion, the positive ion. This is actually the Lewis structure because sodium plus ion has no valence electrons. It has the same number of electrons as its nearest noble gas neighbor. Okay, so in this formula, we have two carbons, we have one oxygen, we have five hydrogens, and we have a charge. So what we are going to do is we are going to subtract the charge with the sign of the charge. So since this is a negative one, we're gonna subtract negative one. When we subtract a negative number, we actually add a positive number. So therefore we get eight plus six, plus five, which would be 19, plus one additional electron, 20 valence electrons in this formula. If we do 6n plus two now, in this formula we have two carbons, one oxygen, five hydrogens, we cross out the hydrogens, we have only three non-hydrogen atoms, so n is three. Six times three plus two is 20, so you can see 20 valence electrons, 6n plus two is 20, they're the same, so therefore we have no multiple bonds. Okay, so now we have to draw a skeletal structure. This is where it's gonna get complicated. There really are two possible skeletons here. We have this one that I've drawn, which was oxygen to carbon to carbon. We also have a skeleton where we can do carbon to oxygen to carbon. That turns out to create a valid structure, but a very unlikely structure for other reasons. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this oxygen on the outside where it can do ionic bonding with the sodium. So therefore I chose this structure. Oxygen, carbon, carbon. We have no multiple bonds, so just this black structure would be our partial skeleton. Now we have to fill in hydrogens. Again, what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of be guided 
by our desired number of bonds, and we're going to tend to try to get our hydrogens on the less electronegative atoms. So for example, we're going to try to fill up these carbons before we start filling up that oxygen. That's not always going to work 100%, but it should get us pretty close. At that point then, we do our remaining electrons. Uh, if we look at our skeleton with just the lines 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's 14 electrons, so 20 minus 14 is 6. When we look at our partial structure, oxygen has only one bond, so it's going to want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then, because we haven't done formal charges yet, we're going to put this entire structure in brackets and put a charge on the outside of the brackets to indicate that the entire structure is a negatively charged ion.